without uh, reading this, um, there is no point in talking about it. Our feeling is also that the refining of ourselves is a mental process. We have been talking about this last time, and some of us have done what we feel goes under that heading of refining ourselves, and we were then reminded yesterday that this is all a mental process, but it is not really consistent with staying with what is, because escaping the what is creates this inner conflict. That's sort of Krishnamurti type school. Um, we, if we were to prepare ourselves now with this list of questions that we were given, I want to say this as a last remark before going into the actual questions, like any of you radio interviewers were doing them before, then we would really feel like we are stuck in the past. This would then keep us in the known. And our journey is obviously a pastless land, and it is most likely in this sense that we want to continue to talk as we move now into the unknown. So the first series of questions or ideas or, um, I don't know. Okay, we can continue. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, no, that's cool. Here we, we're very flexible here too with little screens and notes and notepads. <coughs> so... Cliff, here's the first line of thought that came from someone who has been editing my book and who has helped me in the past. And this seer, that's really from a seer, came up with this idea of the master of the tarot and the master of the bot tarot as a team, meaning uh, you are the master of the bot tarot and I was, past tense, master of tarot. So the it's a nine-pointed question, and I'm trying to summarize this very, very fast now. Does Cliff feel that some of the information from the bots throws a metaphysical light on physical events? If you agree that the bots could be picking up the psyche of man, which is wired into the magnetics of the planet, then is the bot tool also a way for the psyche of man to communicate with itself and avert a disaster? That's the first line of question. End of question. And I, and I, I, um, I would agree that that likely that is occurring. That probably is the mechanism by which we're able to do any forecast in the sense that we're picking up the uh, collective subconscious, the psyche, or or however one wishes to phrase it. I don't. I, I I'm hesitant to think that uh, my work could be used to prevent or avert a disaster. It would be a nice thought, but I don't know how accurate that might be. Okay. Could part of the phenomenon the bots pick up be related to John A. Keel's research into the paranormal or the unseen and bizarre John A. Keel being the author of uh, Operation Trojan Horse and yeah, uh, one, one more interruption. ...coming via someone who was very, uh, who is very in tune with John A. Keel, the author of Mossman Prophecies, uh, Operation Trojan Horse, etc. He just passed away a few weeks ago. And the idea was, could part of the phenomenon of the WebBot project pick up could this be related to John Keel's research into the paranormal and the unseen and bizarre, the hidden world that sometimes affects our physical world unless we are awake enough to see and change the course? Do the bots then seem to pick up a lot of negativity because they exist to warn us, like a shield to protect, rather than to tell us of a beautiful future? Obviously, goodness, a... sorry, obviously the goodness does not have to be predicted. It is pure right. and finds its own way like water flowing to the sea. So the main question coming from this line of thought would be the following. Are the bots changing the way we interact with the future? Do they exist indeed to change the way we interact with the future? That's that kind of line of question coming from a seer to you. End of uh, question. Yeah, I don't know that I could actually answer that in the sense that that uh, means that I must step outside of myself and my process and view it from what universe would want. And all I can say is that trying to anticipate the intent of universe is very difficult. 
I believe that, that the question is sound, and I believe that some of the elements of the question are quite accurate. That is to say, I believe that we are indeed changing how we interact with the future. Um, if we wanted to stop and have a, an, a, a discussion about the mundane for an, a second, we need to understand that the reason that we don't see a predictive future that's all um, bird singing, sun coming out, and, and nice things has to do with the, the way in which I started this work. It was easier for me to assign a value to negative language because there was much more of it to be found. Now, uh, so I just was lazy in that respect, and it was easier to assign negative emotions because they are, they are more easily seen. We, in fact, in our culture here in the West, and particularly in the United States, have this issue of, um, and particularly with males, have this issue of the inability to express those nice thoughts because they are somehow seen unmale-like and uh, not uh, in the testosterone camp, if you will. So there is just less of it to find. And even when one finds it, it is often shielded and guarded by these uh, inhibitions that are placed on the individual human. Now, I think that it's quite accurate to say that, indeed, the nature of the work as a whole certainly is tapping into an area that is beyond the predictive set. And let me explain that real quickly. As I get into the detail levels and look at the actual details from which we can forecast, that would... Uh, uh, appear to be, say, an image from a um, film, from a video, being shown on a screen. The underlying work, though, that reaches into the archetypes, it is my feeling that the archetypes exist on the other side of the screen upon which the details appear. And so the archetypes exist, and it is the expression of those archetypes that we are seeing on the detail level from which the predictions are made. This is an important distinction because it allows us then to think about the archetypes themselves existing beyond our ability to reach out and touch them. Much in the same way that one takes a pulse at a wrist in order to determine the health of the uh, heart and the circulatory system, but So you're not actually sensing the heart, and you're not actually touching the circulatory system itself, but are in fact looking at an indicator at a more surface level. That's the way I view the nature of the work. End of statement. Thank you very much. So one more question before I hand the microphone to my friend Kieran, who has a couple of very interesting lines of thought. There was a question, again a line of thought question, coming from a friend who reads us, who asked, if there is, is there evidence of people having a greatly increased psychic ability in the very near future, let's say within the next two years until 2011? Cliff had been talking about the whole replicator thing, and that got me thinking, is what this man wrote to us. What if instead of technology, we are co-creating reality ourselves so that money or resources have less value in the future? Humans seem to have an innate ability to do things without using technology, unlike, say, certain ETs or aliens. So are we just co-creating reality instantly in the future without any technology? That's the line of question. End of statement. That, that's a very interesting question. I'm not sure I can provide anything in the way of a definitive answer, but I can say that there appears in our data a an amorphous area that could describe uh, such a situation. However, it could also describe the appearance within our midst of actual devices that would achieve the same thing. So what we're seeing is a future in which the area that I called the new electrics could easily have been redefined under uh, the new psychic ability, so to speak. 